Hello and you are very welcome back to DaVinci Resolve A to Z, your one stop for all things DaVinci Resolve and in today's episode we take an in-depth look at the custom curves. So some quick housekeeping before we kick off the tutorial, apologies in advance for background noise, I'm living in the west coast of Ireland, we basically get the first whack of anything coming off the Atlantic Ocean hitting our country and it's quite stormy at the moment so again apologies in advance for any distracting sounds that happens during this tutorial. On with it. Custom curves are awesome. You can do so much with them uh, with the exception of just like something like the qualifier where you're isolating very precise you know pixels based on the information for you know hue, saturation, luminance. You can do so much with the curves, fine tweaking as well as major kind of adjustments. So let's jump into it. Uh, right now we're looking at the luminance, everything is locked up, so all values are going to move here, therefore it's going to be just luminance. With red, green and blue channels moving together, it just means things are going to get, say, brighter if we pull it up, or darker if we pull the highlights down, as well as pulling the shadows down darker, or raising the shadows. So this is your intensity is top and bottom and left to right is uh, the actual luminance of the image so this much luminance of the image so you're looking at about 20 percent black and you can start raising that point etc you can of course make adjustments to just single channels so you can raise up the shadows red values and say keep the rest pretty neutral by adjusting that. So your white is still clean, but your shadows are getting super red. I'll reset everything and of course you can do the same for green and the blue channel. Say I make an adjustment, we've raised up our whites to be almost perfectly white. Um, these sliders are the intensity of those adjustments to the given channel, so with the luminance, uh, by default it's set to 100, so you're seeing entirely what that adjustment is doing, but say you want to dial it in a bit, and that's all you want there, Control D, on and off, it's still doing something, but it's not the full whack of the adjustment you made, so an e extra level of fine control built in there, and of course, individual channels too, if you've made an adjustment for on the red channel, but you want to tone it down, you do so there, green and blue channel as well. Reset everything there. And then this guy is gonna need a little bit more talking about and you kind of, to visualize it, it's probably worth doing the example. So basically, adjustments we've made so far have all been linear kind of adjustments, which means, say, I'm trying to get this square, which is, I believe, I don't know, maybe it's 90% black for argument's sake, but whatever it is, say we want this level of uh, luminance, which is this part of the history, uh, waveform, terrible habit I've developed, um, we want that to sit down on the 1 to 8 line. I start pulling the image down linearly, everything starts to go, and great. I've gotten that where I want it to be, but we've entirely crushed these values into black. Well, fair enough if that's what you want, but it might not necessarily be. So there's kind of two ways of going about this and they both achieve the same thing. Just one, you can see the actual curve that you've added. And in those of you who have cameras like the Sony cameras that you can manually adjust the, the kneel and the uh, knee of the curve um, in the camera, you'll kind of be a bit more familiar with this probably. So there's two ways of going about doing this, like retaining this information as well as getting, say, this black point where you want it to be. First things first, we drop these things down so that they're only starting to crush. This detail is only starting to fall into absolute zero luminance values. And then we can select using our qualifier uh, kind of mouse head. And if that's not what's turned on, if nothing's on or whatever, just go in here and select your qualifier and you can actually click on that, and that will show you where on the uh, curve that value sits. Now, without darkening the rest of the image below here, we can start to pull that value down by itself, 
to sit there. So now we aren't over crushing these values. Now you may want to do that, or maybe you don't want to crush them so much, or maybe you want to crush them a bit more, be somewhat crushed, whatever. But by doing that, see as I start messing with the image here, everything else is moving around, but this point is locked in place. So our value here that we were aiming for sits in place really well. So we might go there. So basically what we did was we got that part of the image, um, that curve to sit, say, if I clear it out of the way, we got to kind of sit in here on the chart. So we'll pull that back in. Here's the other way of doing these things. Let's do it so we remove that point and we pull this all the way down so that the curve naturally intersects with that same point. And if I hear a qualifier, you'll see that we're not a million miles away with that black value. For tutorial's sake, and you can see on the on the waveform here, we have that value sitting where we wanted it as well. But we did so by pulling this down linearly. So what we can do is adjust the curve of it, the values, by using this method instead and pull those details back in. So we basically did the same thing in two different ways. We have some information here, although it's all sitting very low, of course. And we got this point down to where we needed it to be. And of course, this all applies to the highlights as well. You just use high and HS. So what, we use the, the LS kind of thing here, the low shadows. What does this low point do? What this does is right now, black is considered zero value. We can make that sub blacks by pulling it down and changing what that value is, or we can bring it up and kind of uh, increase where things will start to fall off into zero value, like basically prematurely crush the blacks to a value that is actually now slightly gray instead of pure black. So to really exaggerate this, I'll reset everything. And with those blacks well and truly crushed here, I'll start to raise that up and you'll see that instead of now kind of falling apart at the zero point, it's now off up here. So this is a really handy way of doing the kind of vintage washed out look, which we'll look at a bit later as well, uh, very briefly. So that's a really handy way of doing that. And of course you can do the exact same in the highlights. So I'll raise those up and we'll pull down the clipping point and you can start to get these kind of washed out kind of uh, tones. So that's what everything does. And then, uh, you know, if I set that back to 50, same thing here, I could be pulling up our highlights for the sake of getting our mid-tones to sit where we want them. But as a result, we've lost highlight detail. Let's get these blacks looking correct again. And then again, we can use this to pull things back in and now we're not losing anything, but they're kind of crushing away. So in a way you're kind of, you're adjusting shadow roll off and highlight roll off. This is one way of doing it. If that makes any sense, probably doesn't, might never make sense. Anyway, so resetting everything, let's go ahead and do a really quick primary grade now that we know what everything does. Pull our shadow values down so that they start to crush. We will pull our highlights up so that they're around there. Let's go ahead and grab a window, put that over our middle gray. Down, so it's just over that, we'll isolate it. And we can see our middle gray is sitting too high, so we can come back in. Let's find where that is on our graph, and we'll start to pull that down. So that middle gray is where it should be. Let's get rid of the window so that the entire image is affected. So now we know our mids are where our mids should roughly be. Our black value probably still needs to come down some more. Let's grab that and we'll pull that down further. Touching off there. And that's highlights could probably come up a smidgen more. Looking pretty solid for now. Let's go Alt S for a new node. Let's increase our red, green, and blue channel outputs for a natural amount of saturation. Alt S for a new node, and we will 
grab our dropper, click on the white here to adjust our white balance, and we've got primary corrections done. Nice and easy, Alt-D to remove, to mute all nodes. Alt-S and new node, let's actually have a look at creating a look. For the sake of simplicity, we'll just do a simple teal orange look because it's something that everyone's familiar with. So we'll just be learning how to achieve it using the curves rather than actually teaching what the hell the teal orange look is. So teal orange look, we want to bring some blues into our shadows. And note that I'm not pulling uh, the blue value up down here because if I did that, you're totally washing out the image in a way that's very unflattering. So you want to just come down towards the shadow values here. And let's add another point and bring it down so that our mids aren't getting affected. And just compensate for that. Uh, we will do a tiny bit with the green channel too because teal isn't just blue. We're not doing blue, red, we're doing teal and orange. So that'd be decent. And then we also want to do a tiny bit of green. Oops, control Z. Tiny bit of green up towards the highlights, like a tiny, tiny bit. And to be extra safe, green is like the worst thing you can have come into your mid tones when it comes, because that's where your skin tones live. We'll just make sure that our mid range is completely untouched really by any green adjustments. And then we will do some reds in the highlights. And hopefully that's as easy for you guys to read as it is for me as someone who's used to it. But that's what we've done. Instead of using you know our wheels or anything like that, we've increased blue uh, values in the shadows with a hint of green as well, so tealy. And then we've increased orange by adding some uh, red and a smidge in the green, so it's not just reddish that's going in there, it's a bit of the green to make orange as well. Because you can see, orange is kind of between red and green, so we didn't do just red, we didn't do just green, we kind of did red, and then by adding green, we're pulling it around towards the orange. And the same theory within the, the shadows, we added blue, and then we started adding green to start pulling it around towards the teal end of things. So. Control D, and you can see teal and orange achieved with the custom curves. So let's move on to some real world kind of um, footage. So we'll just go to our timeline, adjust the output blanking to 235 because everything looks better in 235. There's, there's just no argument about that. You're wrong if you think otherwise. And we will do a primary grade. So we will bring our highlights up, shadows down. Around there. Let's say uh, our mids, I would consider her skin tones obviously to be mids. So we will grab that and her mid, that's very, they're very bright mid tone values. So we'll start pulling that down. And I'm okay with that there. Um, let's look at the kind of darker parts of her skin tones or lower and we'll pull that down a bit more too so for tonality that's decent for now bring up our highlights a smidgen more maybe a shadow down a smidgen more yeah let's get that's pretty good there alt s go into our oops primary bears no not our primary bears sorry our RGB mixer, bring up our red, green, and blue outputs for a natural amount of saturation. Cool. That's Alt-D. Turn everything on and off. That's a pretty good starting point, and our tonality was all done using our curve. So with that kind of corrected, let's go Alt-S and pull this down here and start doing our teal orange look. Um. And let's do this by looking, and I don't normally do this, but let's just, for fun, you can see it's a fairly well balanced shot because our red, green, and blue channels are very, fairly well uh, fairly well balanced. You could argue that there's a bit of a correction needs to be done there, but for argument's sake, pretty well balanced, especially in the shadows. Teal and orange. 
Um, using, and there's so many ways of doing this, a really good way of doing it could also be by looking at your primary bars, but we're not doing that, we're using R, G, and B. Okay, teal and orange, so let's go to our blue channel. Raise up the blues a little bit in the shadow areas there. And we'll pull the rest down so our mids aren't getting touched. We'll do the same with some green values. Pull the mids down so they're definitely not getting touched. And we want to do a bit of green coming into the highlights too. And in our red channel, want I don't mind a little bit of red seeping in because it kind of gives richer skin tones. So we'll see how it goes first by pulling just that up. Yeah, we're not like doing anything too crazy with our skin tones there. So a little bit seeping into the mids, I'm okay with. Um, I might go ahead and give the shadows just a bit more. And one of the things is it's become a little bit on the desaturated side. So we'll just add a node and give it a little bit more saturation. I think around there is pretty good. Call it 65. And now with that extra saturation in there, I'm going to come back and kind of undo the extra bit of blue that I did. It was a bit much. So if I toggle both of them on and off, you can see that we've brought our tealy into the shadows and we've increased the warmth of our highlights. So a basic teal and orange look. And just for shits and giggles, we'll add another node and we will bump up our kind of black clipping point a bit. Uh, sorry, wrong one. This one, so it's that hard edge. So rather than pulling back in shadow detail, we're actually just clipping it prematurely. And I'm just gonna go look at the image here rather than the scopes and kind of go to a point where I'm starting to notice it but it's not overkills, let's call that 60 and if I toggle that on and off you can mostly see in her hair here we're getting a bit of a washed out look for stylistic sake this proof of concept more than anything and you can see that translating over to the scopes as well that you know this part of the image is probably getting affected as well yeah just a bit washed out so that's stylistic that's not you know primary correction or any of that so if we just toggle those off so this is our primary correction these two Oops. these two is our primary correction and then these three are the teal orange look that we added and all of which, with the exception of adding back in our saturation um, and color balancing stuff, which all could be done absolutely in the curves as well. It's just, you know, I wanted to be quicker about things. Um, you can see a lot can be done, like like I said, with the exception of some color balancing. If I do alt D, everything we did to this image was using just the custom curves. And here's the fun part. There is... One, two, three, four, five other curves we have to look at, all of which are super powerful and super fun to use. And we're gonna be looking into them soon enough as well. So obviously be sure to stick around for all of that. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that should have been covered in this tutorial? Let me know in the comment section below so I know to cover it in a future video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. My name is Lee Dalton. This is DaVinci Resolve A to Z. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.